All right, Patrick, what's up, yes, baby? Sir, what's up, my man? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for sitting down with me. Um, you know, I want to start by genuinely asking, uh, like, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I think, uh, I mean, obviously the season was amazing. I uh, won the Super Bowl and all that. Um, but being a dad now of two um, and getting to enjoy that in the off season, I think that's, that's been the best part. Um, Two-year-old and a six-month-old. So I'm in, I'm in the thick of things, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well, I wanted to talk about that, but let's stay right there. Um, how has being a dad changed your perspective on life and even the game? I think it just, I mean, even more you enjoy the moments. Um, I mean, I'm, in, I'm about to be going into year seven, so I, my football career, it's flying by. Um, and I think now having been able to go home and see my daughter um, and see my son, I have a better understanding of being present and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it helps me enjoy everything. I mean, that, that translates to the football field. and. Uh, we've been on a heck of a run, um, but I'm trying to enjoy those moments because I know that it doesn't last forever, even though we want it to. Remember when you were young and the older guys would rush home and hang out with the family? Yeah. <laughs> and as a rookie, you're like, man, I just want to stay here at the facility and yeah. play ball. But now it's a little bit different. Like now you're the vet that wants mm -hmm. to rush home, spend time with your wife, Brittany, and the kids. Um, it, it does help settle you you know, when you're living within the chaos, right? Oh, 100%. Um, like you said, I used to be the guy that we had, we had a hoop in the locker room, so I was shooting, playing horse, betting money, doing whatever, <laughs> doing whatever it can. I mean, we, we were having a great time. And now I, have to, I get home and I'm with the kids and I try to get home before the kids go to sleep so I can see them um, and I can help put them to sleep and everything like that. But yeah. uh, it's, it, it is, it's different, but at the same time, I, I feel like a kid. Of course. I feel like I'm still one of those guys in the locker room that can do anything. Uh, I just have to know when my moments are that I can go show them I can still hoop a little bit. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt. Well, speaking of moments, you've had some iconic ones so far in your career. Two Super Bowls, two Super Bowl MVPs, breaking record after record after record, without a doubt, the best quarterback in the game. Do you think about legacy at this point, or are you still focused year by year? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, I think if you, you play this position, you play this sport, you always want to think about your legacy a little bit and how you're perceived and how you can go out there and play the game. Um, but for me, I've always said I, was, I just don't want to have any regrets. And I think that's not about regret about losing the game. It's not a regret about um, – uh, how I'm perceived in the media or whatever that is. I just want to know that I've gave everything I had to the game of football. It's mm -hmm. given me so much, um, and that takes every single day. You have to have the mindset of how you practice, how you study film. Um, and I realize how blessed I'm, I am to be on the Kansas City Chiefs with Coach Reed and Travis Kelsey and all these great players around mm -hmm. me. And when I, when I look back, I just want to look back and say I gave everything I have. And if mm -hmm. that's more Super Bowl rings or if that's not anymore, I'll have no regrets. Um, you know, you're talking about all these things on the field, off the field, practice, game day. This docu-series, mm -hmm. quarterback, is the best NFL documentary I've ever seen. Um, it's unique, all unto itself, completely separate than what we've seen before, with all due respect. Um, why did you decide to say yes, and why is this so unique? Um, I think first, your first question, I think why I decided to say yes, because I, I actually talked to Peyton about it for a while. And I, I wanted to, uh, I asked him would he do it? And, and he kind of had said, maybe not at the beginning of my career, but I think what stuck with me is he said, at the end of my career, I wish I would have done it so my kids could have seen what I was doing every day. Mm. And, and that hit me, obviously, having two kids. Um, and we actually, we, Brittany was pregnant throughout the series this year. So we get to see going through that pregnancy uh, with Sterling being uh, two years old and everything like that, one years old, about to be two. Um, and I think that that was the biggest thing that hit me was I, I wanted to, when my kids grow up, I wanted to see that dad wasn't just gone just to be gone. I was gone doing something uh, to build, to be great. And so whenever they get older, they can see that how much, I, how hard I worked. Yeah. Um, and whenever, whatever that is for them, they work just as hard and can achieve uh, the successes that I've had. And you display your passion on a different level. Uh, you know, I, I, I love it because it's completely unfiltered. It takes you inside the game like I've never seen it before. Of course, we've seen mic'd up videos, but there's nothing like you in the thick of it, the thick of the chaos, the beauty, the poetry, um, the planned, the unplanned, the off schedule. When you're looking back at quarterback, uh, what are you most proud of? Yeah, I think you said, I think I'm just proud of the way I play the game. Um, through the ups and the downs, obviously it was a great season. We won a lot of games, but we lost some big games in the, in the season. Um, you just saw how I just kind of continue to battle, continue to get better, continue to, to, to uh, try to achieve the ultimate goal. 
Um, and that's what it takes. Um, it, it, it takes you just having that, that end goal in mind, but taking it day by day. Um, and that's what I try to do. And when you look back at it, you see um, me go through those, those adverse moments and, and get better from it. Um, battle through some injuries, um, and then at the same time, enjoy it and have fun. Yeah. Um, not only on the field, um, but off the field with some of my teammates and my family, of, of course. And so it was a, uh, it was really cool to look back, and you forget those little moments, um, yeah. and you find those little moments now, and you can really just uh, truly appreciate them. I, I like when uh, you have a little bit of a confrontation on the field, um, which as a receiver, <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, and then after the game, you're like, I don't know what I was saying. You know, I, I blacked out a little bit. I respect it because that's what happens. In between those lines, um, you can kind of zone out. But speaking of zoning out, I want to talk about the opposite, zoning in. Mm -hmm. Because I've talked to professional golfers, NBA players. What is it like when you're in the zone? The game slows down. I can see my swing and the ball going to the hole. It's the size of a basket. Or shooting guard in the NBA, the hoop is like the ocean. Everything I'm throwing at it is going in. For the best quarterback in the league, and I've seen you get into your bag, bro. I'm talking about so much so, and I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm hitting people next to me saying, he's, he's on autopilot. What is that like? Like, break it down for the viewer at home when the game becomes easy. Um, I, think it, I, mean, I think it's all from preparation. Um, I've, I watch a lot of Kobe videos, and if you ever watch anything about Kobe, he always talks about the shots that he practices thousands and thousands of times to take once, to take twice. Um, and I, that's why you see all these amazing arm angles and throws and all the different type of stuff, but I prepare for those moments. And luckily enough for me, I've had a lot of great coaches that have let me kind of be outside the box and really be who I am. Um, and so whenever those moments do come up during the game, it's not like it's the first time I've done it. I've prepared for that. Mm. And, I think that's why it slows down. I think if you look at golfers like Tiger Woods, I mean, he's swung those those swings so many times that he can he knows exactly how to swing them and hit the shot perfectly in the exact spot. Um, obviously, Kobe and then the baseball. I mean, they take so many swings uh, yeah. and try to prepare themselves. And so, I think it comes from preparation. And I mean, obviously, the game day you see the highlights and everybody's like, oh, it's it's a highlight reel. It's this guy. He's he's being Superman out there. But they don't see that preparation. Mm. I think this docu series shows that is that we're preparing. Um, every day for that one throw that you're going to have throughout the season. Um, and so you can execute it and go out there and win games. Yeah, you're working out at the facility with your guys and then separately with your trainers. Mm -hmm. You put in the work um, twice as much, which, you know, is obvious um, why you're twice as good. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to talk about, like, what makes you happy? Like, what brings you joy on the field? Is it dropping back, throwing a no-look pass in a small window? Is it seeing a defender on one of your receivers on Travis Kelsey and you just drop a dime on them? Um, is it fighting through a tough game where you're not playing as well and then you get that team victory? What brings you absolute joy? Um, I know it's kind of, it might be a little boring of an answer, uh, but for me, it's when a defensive coordinator gets too aggressive and I pick up the protection and then make them pay for it. Um, I like and, that. I, and I think, uh, that comes from my first year. There was a couple of defensive coordinators that were getting me on those pressures, and they thought that was the way to kind of get me. Um, and so I took it as a challenge of I want to be that guy that if you're going to bring pressure, know that there's a chance you're going to pay. Um, and so I'll, every week that's what I focus on is the, whatever the, I think the defense can present to me um, and how I can get that, that picked up with the offensive line and then uh, let my guys be one-on-one -on -one making plays. Yeah, I like it when you, there's a couple of times you were like, bring it, yeah. bring it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you were drafted in baseball. You chose the football route. Mm -hmm. For the young boys and girls out there who are trying to figure out how to approach the sports life, do you recommend that they try and play multiple sports or put all their eggs in one basket? I think I know the answer, yeah. but I'm curious to hear from you. Yeah, I think when you're younger, it's always play as many sports as possible. Um, that's what I did. I played every sport, uh, and I found passion for a lot of them. Football was probably my third favorite sport growing up. That's wild. All the way until like probably my junior, senior year of high school. Um, and so I just found passion, and I think that's why it shows with how I play the game. Obviously, there's certain situations if you want to focus and, and put all your, your focus into one sport, if you find that sport and you truly love it and it's your decision as a kid, then do it. Um, but at the same time, getting those multiple sports and maybe not being the best at a sport, and you have to figure out ways to have success, I think that builds you up to it whenever you do find that one sport. Yeah. Uh, you know how to keep getting better and not being satisfied with where you're at. Do you get nervous before games? 
I definitely get nervous, um, especially the night before. I get a little nervous, have to what, take some like uh, uh, melatonin or something just to get myself to go to sleep. Um, but once you step on that field and that first play happens, it's, it all goes away. Um, and I think that's just what it is for a lot of football players. You probably say the same of thing. Course, of course, um, restless in the bed the night before. It, it, you can't it, sleep. You, you prepare so much for those moments. We yeah. have we only have 17 games that you're promised, yeah. um, and that's if you don't get hurt. Yeah. So you prepare so much in the off season for those moments that you do have some nerves, some anxiety going into the game. But once you step on there and you can just play the sport you love, it all goes away. What's a better feeling, playing the hero at home or the villain on the road. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I like to be the villain a little bit. Yeah! <laughs> but <it's>, yeah. Me too! <laughs> no, yeah, it's uh, obviously it's cool. Arrowhead, be the hero. Of course. Um, and win the games and, and be able to host the AFC Championship trophy. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just as fun, no offense to any of my division opponents, to go to their places and win those games. And so uh, it's... Uh, it's definitely, uh, it's, it, both are great, but yeah. uh, I, even though I, I have the smile, I like being the villain sometimes. Um, even though this game can be very physical, I believe it's a cerebral game. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Is it more like a chess match or more like a heavyweight bout um, between fighters? I think a, a little bit of both, but I would say chess match probably, uh, especially when it comes to the coaches um, and going against D. Like our, like we have, obviously, we had Eric Bieniemy, office coordinator, now Matt Nagy. Um, going up against some of these great defensive coordinators, um, and obviously Coach Reeves, like the, yeah. the the guy. I mean, no as far as offenses go, and, yeah, exactly. And so um, it's a chess match, and as a quarterback position, you have to be able to recognize when the defense throws you a little bit of curveball, uh, yeah. maybe a move that you weren't expecting, and how can you succeed? And I think I've learned that the most in the NFL. I always tell young guys coming from college or even high, going from high school to college, wherever it is, I said the next step you take, the more your mind's going to play more than your physical ability. Um, and so uh, that's something that I, I truly think is when I really took that next step was that year I sat and I learned that from Alex Smith. Um, yeah. I'd always been a guy that could physically make stuff happen, but I, when I learned how to let my mind really work, um, that's when I really took that next step in my game. You are the face of the league and you're searching for your third Super Bowl. This year's going to be in Las Vegas. It doesn't get bigger and badder and better than Vegas. And CBS, mm -hmm. we have the Super Bowl. <laughs> Should I plan on seeing you and the Kansas City Chiefs there? Oh, yeah, you got to plan on that. I mean, obviously, the AFC, <laughs> AFC is going to be hard this year. Um, a lot of great quarterbacks, a lot of great teams. Um, but as Travis Kelsey says, we never lost in Vegas together. So uh, we're going to try to make sure we get to that game. Uh, I haven't won one on CBS yet, I don't think. So I'm going to try to make sure I can do that. Well, I appreciate it, man. That would do <laughs> us right, you know what I mean, because you are entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to talk about the game of the NFL. It seems like they do such a good job of trying to protect his players. Um, but yet and still, guys get banged mm -hmm. up. You know, you look at what happened with Tua last year. He was knocked out, was able to come back, and now it looks like he's, he's doing well. Where do you think the league is when it comes to protecting players, more specifically quarterbacks? I think the league's progressing. I mean, obviously, we're in a better spot than we were, if you say, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're trying to find that happy medium. We want to let defensive players be, show off their talents as well, but we want to protect everybody, not just the offense. And so um, the more and more technology we can get, um, I think that helps out a ton. I always go for like the most safe helmet you could possibly have, even if it doesn't look the coolest sometimes. Right. Um, and I might get a few jokes at me from the teammates. I'm like, man, I'm trying to protect myself for the long term. And so uh, I think uh, we've got to continue to do the research, continue to progress as a league and as, as teams and as players, um, and know that there might be some hiccups as far as some rules go. But if we can get that, our game to a better place for the future, uh, behind us, um, then we, we say we could do our job the right way. Yeah, my two sons play football, and they were complaining about the new look of the safe helmets. I'm yeah. like, I don't care if you look like a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, bro. <laughs> as long as you're safe out there, we're good. That's what I say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you were on um, Time Magazine's Most Influential People mm -hmm. of 2023. Mm -hmm. Now, on that list, President Biden, Supreme Court Justices, Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Do you ever sit back and think to yourself, Life has gotten pretty wild. No, I think about that all the time. <laughs> I mean, I feel, I feel like I'm still a young guy, but uh, I'm, I've always known since my dad played sports and I got to watch uh, all these baseball players ahead of me, I want to be that guy that I looked up to. Um, and so I, I try to be that every single day with all my decisions and all my, uh, my opportunities. I want to be someone that the kids can look up to and say that, hey, I want to be like Patrick Mahomes, and I want parents to think that, hey, that's, that's a guy that I want my kid to be like. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I play the game. I try to enjoy it. Uh, I try to enjoy my time with my family. When I'm on TV or when I'm in the, in the spotlight, I try to show off the right example. No doubt about it. Um, 
I'm married, I got three kids, four brothers, big family. I got drafted in 03, and I just thought, oh, I'm gonna go on this NFL journey by myself. And then I realized, it's not really like that. Mm -hmm. It's everybody. And then when you become a superstar, which I was just a regular player, you're a superstar. Mm -hmm. The magnifying glass, it gets brighter and brighter and more intensified and intensified. It's not just on you, mm -hmm. it's on friends, it's on family. Sometimes you have to answer for family, I'm not getting into specifics, but um, how do you balance dealing with your brand and also dealing with the family? And what advice do you give to young players mm -hmm. who just got drafted, who really don't realize that it's not just you on this journey, yeah. it's everybody? I think it's, I mean, first off, with the people around you explaining that to them, um, that they have a new spotlight, even if they didn't necessarily want it. Um, and then just having great people around you. Um, I feel like I have a lot of great people around me and everyone that, that I kind of have in my circle is people that I, I truly love. Um, and I think if you have those relationships and continue to better each other, um, that's how you come out and be great people. And so that's what I try to explain to everyone that's around me. And I try to keep those great people around me. I mean, I still hang out with the same buddies I hung out with playing baseball in Little League. So it's the same guys that I've always grown up with. Um, that's that's kind of my circle. And one of those people, uh, your wife, Brittany, mm -hmm. she is passionate as ever. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite parts of this whole docuseries was seeing her in the suite. Yeah. She's locked in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she was more locked in than you. <laughs> exactly. Um, and what I love, there was this connection. She knew exactly what you were thinking, watching you from a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. I think you got banged up at one point, and she was like, oh, he's trying to get back in the game. <laughs> she was basically like, sit your ass down. <laughs> like, it's the second quarter, <laughs> going at halftime. Um, what is it like to have someone by your side that is as invested in your well-being, your career, and your success mm -hmm. as your wife? No, I truly mean this when I say it. I think if I didn't have Brittany, I wouldn't be in the position I am now. I mean, she she keeps me more locked in than I, I probably would be if I was by myself. I mean, there's times where I might come home and I'm tired and I don't want to study or do stuff like that, and she'll tell me, yeah, you need to get your work in before you before you come to bed, and that means I need to. Yeah. Um, and so it's a... Uh, it's, it's awesome to have someone like that by your side that's a competitor. I mean, she played professional soccer, of so she, she understands the drive and the work ethic. Um, and, and when I get home, it's always, I mean, obviously I'm going to help with the kids do that different type of stuff, um, but she makes sure that I get my work done. Um, and so then when I can enjoy my time with my family, I can enjoy it. Um, and so I think, I think everybody needs that person. Uh, it, might not, it might not be your wife, or, but it might be a parent or it might be a brother or sister, but you need someone that can continue to drive you even when you're in those down moments. Um, your pops played Major League Baseball and you were around the game at a very young age. Mm -hmm. What did you learn watching him kind of navigate through his professional career? And then him being a retired athlete, what did you learn watching him in his second chapter after that? I think what I learned um, was the, the dedication and work ethic it took to, to be in the pros. I mean, my dad was in the pros at a very young age. I think he was like 20, 20 years old, one of the youngest baseball players the being the pros at that time. That's crazy. Um, and then he, he played in the majors for a long time, then went to the minors and bounced back up to the majors and kind of had that where he had to continue to work and continue to work and had that love for the game. And um, he played for 20 years of professional baseball, all the way from the major leagues, all the way to Japan, yeah. uh, and then all the way in independent baseball. And so he just loved the game. And I think that's what I, what I learned is it takes work every single day. Um, and I learned from other players he played with the same things. And then in his second career, I think you, it's about finding that passion that you love. And he coaches baseball now. Um, and he, he's always, he just wants to be around the game and he coaches the young, young kids now that he used to kind of help coach me and I think he found that passion for teaching um, mm. the game. The game. Um, and I think that's something that I want to do is whatever I do uh, when I'm done playing football, I want to have a passion for it so I love it every day. Yeah, and you play with that passion. That passion allows you to fight through some tough moments. Um, you have played with banged up shoulders, hands, fingers, ribs. I remember seeing your knee on backwards. You, you did a quarterback sneak and I'm tripping. And you wanted to go back in the game. Mm. You were playing on bad ankles that would have sidelined guys for six weeks. You're playing in some of the biggest games, bigger than everybody on the field. So what is it that helps you get through those moments? Because people don't realize, they might compliment you and say, you're a warrior, you're tough, but they don't get it. Like, for you to have torn ligaments, broken bones, sprains, and fractures, but still go out there, it's a different mentality. So is it, is it the, the money? Is it the, the praise? Or is it just simply the love of the game? I think it's, I mean, it's the love of the game. I think it's, 
it's a mental thing that you have to kind of deal with. And I think I told a lot of my team, a lot of my coaches and, and Brittany and all them that is just like, I got, I got two more games. Uh, I had to finish that game in Jacksonville, then I had to play the Bengals um, and then win the Super Bowl. Um, and I was like, if I can get through those games, we can worry about it in the off season. Mm. Um, and that's the biggest thing is, you, like I said earlier, you build up all your off season, all season long to be in those moments. Um, and I want to make sure that when I'm in those moments, I give everything I have. Um, and so it was going to take basically my, my ankle being off for me not to get back in that game. And I think you can see in the docuseries, I mean, there's times where the coaches were trying to protect me and get me out off the field. And I didn't want to get off the field. I wanted to be out there with my teammates. Um, and um, luckily enough, we were able to win those games. Yeah. Um, and I was able to, I had to do a lot of treatment, but I was able to get through uh, all the way to the off season. And now I've kind of gotten it back to where I can go into this next season healthy and ready to go. The money does help, though. Money always helps. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Uh, now, when it comes to that, I don't want to make it specifically about the contract, but um, it is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. to be a player that has set a new mark in a sport that's been chasing baseball, mm -hmm. chasing the NBA. Um, what is it like to be one of those guys at the forefront of changing the finances of what the NFL is? Yeah, I think you say it. You said it. I mean, it's not only about me and uh, me trying to make money for the, my future generations and everything like that, but you want to continue to push the bar. And I think that's what you see. And I, mean, I know people, sometimes fans are like, why don't you do It's a lot of money. You can just sign a deal. But it's not only for yourself. You're trying to sign a big enough deal that it's going to help other guys go out there and get right. deals. And so right. uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great sport. It's, it gives you a lot of opportunities. Uh, you're able to make a lot of money. And it's just a kid's game. I mean, you can't complain. Um, but at the same time, you want to help future generations and help them be able to, to get that money that they deserve. And so I'm going to try to continue to push the bar um, uh, for my entire career uh, with uh, keeping great players around me and getting them paid as well so we can win some games. You know, I played against some of the best quarterbacks this league has to offer. Tom Brady being at mm -hmm. the top of the list, Aaron Rodgers. Um, and at the time, I thought to myself, there can't be a guy out there that can chase Tom Brady, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Super Bowls he won, the, the amount of time he has spent putting in the work, the years being in the league mm -hmm. and playing at a high level. And then here comes this guy, Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. And now I'm having conversations thinking to myself, if anybody can do it, Patrick can. He started off so fast, so hot, and I truly believe, I don't think you scratch the surface mm -hmm. of how great you can be, and you're already great. Do you think about Tom and his career and saying, you know what, yeah, I want to win six, seven, eight Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. You know, when Kobe was watching Mike, he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to win as many as Mike. Does that factor in? Uh, it, it does, but at the same time, I know it's a long ways away. Um, yeah. And you have that ultimate goal. You, you see how he did it, how he went through his career. I try to learn from Tom. I mean, I talk to Tom and try to learn from him as much as he'll give me. Yeah. Um, and I think it's... It's it's a long ways away, but you have that goal at the end at, in the back of your mind, and uh, it's going to be it's going to take it's going to be a lot of hard work. I mean, like I said, ASC's tough. I mean, you, all these young quarterbacks have came in since I've came in, and I'm kind of the old guy now. But at the same time, they're they're all rising and getting better and better. So I can't be satisfied with where I'm at. Um, where I was at last year is not going to win the Super Bowl this year. I'm going to mm. continue to push and get better and better. Um, and if I can do that and try to get myself in these big games, uh, I think we have a chance to win a, win at least a couple more. When it's all said and done. What do you want your legacy to be? I don't always be remembered as a great quarterback, but but uh, but remembered more as a better person. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's my goal is I want people to see um, the love that I have for the, the game of football, the love I have for my family, um, and I, the love I have for being a role model. Um, and I think if they see that and they remember me as that, um, then I've, I've done what I need to do in the game of football.